Welcome back to the stream. Uh, we're playing a little bit of Cascade Valley today. We're going to do two games, maybe three. We'll kind of play it by ear from there. But I wanted to get into a little bit of that Cascade Valley. Uh, should be a great little stream. We've got number 14, Kentucky. I think Georgia might be unranked, but they're still Georgia. So this is a really good team. And then after them, I can't remember who we play. I know we play Kentucky and Georgia, which should be two really difficult games, if you ask me. You know, uh, King Joey Live. That's probably the number one way to get blocked and have no one follow you. So it's up to you, man. But the block button's being hovered on. <laughs> Tokyo Dragons in the scout group. Yeah, it should be a great one, man. I'm pretty excited. Hope you guys are too. Uh, we're going to jump into it and it should be a great one. A great one. All right. All right, let's swap that. pop out that chat and there we go <clears throat> what's up andrew what is up chase hello hello all right how do you feel about the arthur smith hiring nah pittsburgh didn't hire him you're lying you're playing with my emotions you're gonna make me google this right now we hire a dude who doesn't pass the football i'm not even gonna get on this rant i'll rant about this tonight why do we hire ben johnson <clears throat> anyways anyways champ uh, let's, let me play cvu to oh maz you gotta be devastated too that's tough oh all right well here we are here we are welcome back to week number six year number 13 of the cascade valley coyotes Now this week we are facing the Auburn Tigers, number 14 Auburn Tigers. This is going to be a really big test for us right now. Yes, we played some ranked teams here and there, but Auburn is a very talented team and our work is cut out for us. I think overall we stack up pretty well against them, but they've got a pretty good rush offense. So we'll see how our defense kind of goes up against that because we've had some issues against the run. All right, let's look at the roster. Now, looking at Auburn's roster, they have Aaron Humphreys as their number one guy. What? Are you kidding me? This dude is six foot six, 96 overall at wide receiver, 90 speed, 96 acceleration. This dude is an absolute stud. Okay, we have our work. This dude is like a tight end. This is like LeBron James. This is a mini LeBron James round that we're basically playing against. They've got a really good corner, a really good halfback. It's a little bit slower, but we've seen slow running backs dominate against us. I'm asking a quarterback, though, and their quarterback is Andrew Rendazzo, a sophomore, true sophomore, 88 overall. 80 speed behind him. They have Michael Baker, a junior. Again, a halfback. There's some solid talent there. Their backup is actually hurt right now, which is interesting. Uh, behind this giant of a receiver, they've got Jordan Holland, who's a really good junior uh, receiver for them. They've got Henry Knighton. They've got Curtis Johnson. So there's some pretty good talent across the board. This is a very, very good team that we have to play today. Okay. Uh, let's look at the Heisman. Now, from a Heisman watch standpoint, we're doing really well. Tyrell Brown, still the number one guy, had a really good performance last week overall in what was a blowout against South Carolina. We find our guy Taylor Reed also there. Another great performance by him. Yes, there were some turnover issues, but for the most part, he's been really good this year. One of two QBs on the list right now, Tanner Hawthorne, though, jumped over uh, our guy Taylor Reed. And he's sitting there the number one spot. I think Taylor's personally better, but you got to get some credit where credit's due. This guy's been playing well. Now, looking at the top 25, we are still the number one team. Alabama still has 28 votes. We don't agree with that, but it is neither here nor there. They don't play this week. We play number 14, Auburn. It's an opportunity for us to prove that we are the best. But look out for USC. They play number four, Nebraska. If we kind of have a shaky game where we maybe win against Auburn, but don't really win convincingly, and USC beats number four, Nebraska handily, they could jump into the number one spot. Uh, 
Oh yeah, Lloyd Griffin. Okay. From a recruiting standpoint, we have Jameer Nave and MJ Williams both visiting campus this week. So again, a very important game, a very tough game, but one that definitely matters for us right now. But I do want to give a shout out to Lloyd Griffin, a 7'8 overall athlete that ended up joining our school. He is going to be one of the best recruits we've had. I mean, not one of the best, but adding to one of the best recruiting classes we've had uh, in quite some time. 90 speed, 91 acceleration, 89 play rec. He's got 89 man coverage, 83 zone coverage. My initial assumption is he's going to be playing defensive back of some sort. But again, this guy is going to be very good with that speed and those cover skills on our team. As for the rest of the guys in our squad right now, Jack Cardila feels like he should be joining our squad any day now. He's almost 100% locked. Uh, Jameer Nave, we're looking into him. We're feeling pretty good about that. He's visiting this week, which should put us in the number one spot. UCLA visits soon, but again, I think we're going to be in the number one driver's seat for quite some time, especially getting that Auburn. I mean, see that Washington doesn't have a visit until week 14. MJ Williams, again, visiting this week. We should be able to jump into the number two, if not number three spot uh, there as well. Schweidemann, we're kind of keeping on for a little bit of depth. We're kind of figuring out where he's going to go. Uh, Ian Scape Jr., again, the backup tight end. And then we have Greg Polk, who we are trying to work our way into that top three spot. He's about to be locked. If we do get locked out and he doesn't make a decision ASAP, we can probably buy our way into that and then be okay. I actually want to do some recruiting really quick, too, while we got a chance, chat. Let's go all prospects. I can't believe Ben Johnson's going back. I kind of understand him going back. But that does feel kind of uh kind of crazy. Chat, I feel like this guy. I'm looking at like some of the top guys that haven't uh fully committed, and I'm like, you know what? I, I might uh, you know, might take a little gamble. We got plenty of points to spend, so I'm like, we can we're in a spot where we can do that. With defensive end, 43%. He's probably trash though. Clyde Glasgow the second, 68 overall or 68%. I'm trying to find guys below 60%. That guy's a boss. Yeah, people that don't have a high percentage are pretty much not good. But sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you get lucky. So we're just looking for Mary Alexander, 60%. This guy's 38%. Like these are top 100 guys that maybe have just fallen by the wayside, and we will absolutely take a gander and see what we can get from them. Cap is actually the coach. You just... Oh, okay. You guys are still talking now. This is like an old name, Lloyd Griffin. Yeah, it's definitely an old person name. He was born old. John Witherspoon. I feel like one or two other people. There's a lot of receivers. I feel like they're going to be trash. Defensive ends. He has a lot of receivers. Holy. That's 51%. Okay. We're going to look at these guys, see if any of them are good. That's kind of the challenge right now. Are any of them good? All right, let's do Wait, anybody. Oh, somebody needs a visit. Oh, Greg Polk needs a visit. Oh, what happened visit this week? Why not? Okay, let's go. Not scouted. We have 11 people we just added. Woo. Um, yeah, we got 2300 points you can play with here. So might as well. All right, here we go. Even though he's minus three, he's still in 85 overall. What are our ability to, what is our, what is our plus on him? We're plus 400 weekly. Nobody else is close up for Florida on that, bro. We might. If he locks us out, we could buy in and be okay. I'm going to actually put the points in this guy, his strong safety. Oh yeah, for sure. Harrington trash. Back him out. All right, another defensive end. Trash. This is what happens. But you might find a guy who's actually still good. 77. Though I need an outside linebacker to be faster than that. Wide receiver. Cheeks. Guard. Cheeks. Wide receiver. Super cheeks. Center. Cheeks. 77 strength. No, thank you. Yeah, you better go play Division 2. Division three, maybe. Yeah, most of those guys were not good. Okay, we can. 
this Janarian Henry dude, though, like, his speed kind of sucks, but he could maybe move to linebacker. Um, hit power 86, tackle 93, zone coverage 86. I could probably move this guy to linebacker, honestly. And he would still be probably fine. We'll, we'll give him a shot. We'll give him a shot. Have you considered working with GameStop again? They shut down GameStop TV uh, a while back. And they went a different route. And my understanding is that different route did not work. Um, and I don't think they're really doing as much video content outside of some GameStop employees that are doing it. But uh, yeah, I don't think how they tried to pivot ended up working for them. So I enjoyed it. It was fun to do. But uh, yeah, unless they're bringing that back, I don't think we'll be working with them in that capacity. The man's a linebacker? Yeah, I think so. Look good, Sage. How you doing? All right, green. Let me look at interest first really quick. Oh, yeah, Eddie Hollier is the guy we got. I forgot we got him. Holy. Is this guy's attributes? Do we know? Nobody's scouting him, which kind of scares me. Let's look at him. I'm kind of... Like nervous by his stuff. Oh, Robinson. 90 speed, 83 excel, throw power. Oh, he was a quarterback. We don't need him. That guy's too slow for anything on my team. I need speed in Cascade Valley. Earl Richardson, 6'1, 245. Jesus. A quarterback? No. Don't need him. Hmm. Hmm. I feel like most of these guys are gonna be bad. Anybody that's like dumb fast, actually. I'm so pissed this guy went to Auburn. Oh, I need to I don't think I mentioned this in the video. I need to talk about this. I also don't remember if I brought this up in a previous episode, but Ty Lucky went to Auburn. We play Auburn this week. You can bet we're going to make him pay. I don't remember if I brought that up, so might as well. GameStop had a TV thing going. Yeah, I used to do uh, content for them, and I would do like one or two videos a month. Paid, honestly, decently well. Um, it was worth doing, and I had a lot of people that would go into the store and be like, oh my god, I saw you there. Oh my god. Um, so it was pretty cool. But they shut the door on it. Uh, unfortunately, why did I not go after this guy? Yeah, this guy's an 80 overall. Why did we not go after him? Is it because we just fell out of the race for him? Yeah, add him back, buddy. What are we doing here? I'm going to put 700 points on him right now. That's a good point, Jared. That's a good point. Uh, let me scout these guys really quick. Trash. This guy. Okay. KJ Camperial. 5'11", 233. What is he? Could be a receiver, it looks like. Looks like he maybe plays running back as well, but I'd rather have him for, uh... Oh, I might be able to give him just a straight scholarship. But he might join us off the jump. I'd right, rather have him visit this week, too. See, is it, it says running back. I don't think he's going to be a running back. I think he's going to be in a receiver. Um, 82 acceleration. He's got to play receiver for me. He's got 79 catching, 76 route running, 84 spectacular catch, 76 route running. He's... He's probably going to be a receiver for me. And 86 return will probably work him into being a receiver returner type thing. Bro, we are 4,700 behind. I think we can make this work. We're plus 330. Best team is plus 330, the two top teams. We can absolutely make this work. We'll, we'll move up the board on him. We'll get up. We'll gain like 200 some each week. We'll get locked out. We buy back in. I think we're fine. We got a chance. And then we'll give him the remainder, which is 200. Okay, cool. Vladdy Jr.'s MLB, the show 24's cover athlete. Did they just announce it? 
Anybody want to put that in the MNY gaming section of the Discord? The maybe next year Discord? Anybody? All right. I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good about that stuff. All right. Time to play Auburn. Do you know the new NCAA game if they'll have Fangs recruiting like they have now with some of the recruits high overalls? Um, well, Fangs recruiting won't be the new NCAA unless they have a PC version, which I hope they do. Um, but if you just mean like the higher overalls, we have literally no idea on any of the features and stuff they're doing um we can hope but they have given us no information probably won't until march if i had to guess um i think i might rock the orange these uniforms are kind of underrated um i think we're gonna rock these the cleats are not pink i know it looks like that but they're not make them wear the all whites yeah all right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, so I started following him when I started my shift at work. Oh, that's sick, Nicholas. That's sick, man. Yeah, I really love doing that. But they kind of shuttered that program, so nothing I can do on that, unfortunately. Juice ex wife got a licensing deal with the NFL, as she should. Her stuff is sick. Okay, let's do this really quick. Now, for our prospects visiting this week, we actually did add another guy or two. Uh, we have MJ Williams. We need four swatted passes or two picks. Same thing for Jameer Nave. And then for KJ Camparial, we need 100 rushing yards. He could play running back or receiver. I kind of like him a little bit more for receiver. Just looking at his attributes overall because his stuff isn't super high for running back. But still, that's what we got to do. It's what we got to do. Tough game against Auburn. How's my ankle? Well, it's my Achilles, but you can uh, you can always type in exclamation uh, injury, and that will tell you on Twitch uh, the most up to date information on my foot. All right, Chad, let's get it. Hey, YouTube, get them reactions up. Let's hit that reaction button if you hype. Let's go. All right, little Cascade Valley run to start the game. You love to see it. And Tyro Brown says, put me on the top of the Heisman list and keep me there forever. Auburn's a super tough opponent. This is what people said. Come to the SEC where they were expecting us to play against. And Lopez gets an interception to start the game. Are you kidding me? crazy yeah not the best start not the best start a lot of pressure on this Cascade Valley defense now to do something because that is not how you want to start this game and their running back is going crazy luckily for us he goes backwards
quarterback lines up under center we've got a lot of guys going right after him and look at this heinrich is going to bring down rendazzo for a loss of seven oh day county is i don't have that one yet i can't do it to the off season but i'm excited to add that one in to uh to this Big time players make big time plays right now. We need these guys to lock up here and not let them get a first down and a great hit by Mikel Lanier to force a fourth and four for Auburn. I think Taylor Reed throwing an interception on the first pass play of the game. This is honestly a welcomed outcome. Auburn kicking a field goal and they could have easily had seven points with short field. We will take every single time and Tennessee just beat Georgia. Georgia was undefeated. We played them next week. They just get a big loss against Tennessee. All right, let's not throw another interception. Well, right back to the run game here, because that's the one thing that did well for us to start last drive. Hey, what's up, Keith? I'm on Twitch. I play a lot of different stuff. Uh, I'll stream my sports stuff. will get uh, streamed over here, too, but... You can always catch me on Twitch, too. Well, second and five action, getting Tyro Brown involved in the passing game because, again, we are not trying to throw some interceptions here. Tyro Brown looking great. It's going to be pushed out of bounds after 23 yards. A lot of people doubted Tyro Brown coming in this year because, you know, he didn't really have the best start last year. And honestly, he, towards the end of the year, he picked up and did incredibly well. But this dude has been so unbelievably good for Cascade Valley. And Taylor Reed throwing off his back foot gets a nice pass here. Carno Killens is going to be in there for 26 yards. Uh, my editors do them. I have two editors, Potatoes. First down again for Cascade Valley. A pass here to Jay Bowman. It's a dot for a first down. Auburn looked great in that first drive, but their defense is getting pushed around by Cascade Valley right now. Tyro Brown trying to get to the edge. He's easily going to walk into the end zone completely untouched. And just like that, CBU has the lead right back. Crowd is starting to get hype right now. This is what you need to see. This Cascade Valley crowd is unlike any other. Keyshawn Anderson trying to come in off the blitz. Doesn't get there, but oh no. Reggie Kraft, I think, might have blown the assignment there. 82 is going to push two Cascade Valley defenders down. It's Mikel Lanier bringing down Darius Beaton 57 yards later. That's crazy. Unreal play there by Auburn. They answer right back now. They're in the driver's seat. See what they can do when their quarterback quickly throws it away because he felt that heat. Second and 10, they're going to slide one guy over here. Darius Beaton over to the left-hand side. We got a nice little halfback draw play here, and our guys are going to bring him down short of the mark by two. Hey, YouTube, appreciate you guys coming in. Make sure you guys show some love. Hit that like button. Helps out a ton. Shows me you guys want more of these streams. Helps more people find the stream, too. Big third down, two yards to go. They're going to go with the QB keeper. A pitch out here. Our guys are oblivious. And, oh, Allen is not going to get there. And Emmanuel Dixon, 12 yards later, has the lead right back for Auburn. Go 
Wait, JJ, that's Buck Bomb? What's up, Buck? Aubrey again, looking at us, making us look silly there. Not as silly as. Never mind, Tyro Brown's dead. Holy, that man just died. Outside of early in the game, there has not been very much defense at all in this battle. Taylor Reed is just looking for something. Sees a guy, throws it way short, and it's Lopez. His throw on the run is not exactly ideal, and he proves it again right there. Golly. Dumb play on my part. Things getting a little tough here for Cascade Valley. Their quarterback's going to try to get something here, but Randazzo's going to be brought down by Keyshawn Anderson. It's difficult sometimes remembering that Taylor Reed doesn't really have the ability to get that ball coast to coast on the run, quite like his predecessors the Cascade Valley have. McDonald, Fullwood, even John McConnell back in the day. Defense is trying to get some pressure to Rendazzo. A free shot there at him, and they aren't able to bring him down. He gets rid of it as Lanier bringing up Knighton for a gain of five. Second to five here. Heinrich trying to get into the quarterback. Lopez is going to try to bring him down. He can't. ODR, he finally gets him, but Rondazzo makes something out of that and gets two yards. Our guys know Cascade Valley needs to stop here. We're trying to get some pressure on the quarterback. And look at this. Heinrich is going to get in there, and Rondazzo goes down. Nah, you good, Buck. I appreciate you being over there, too. So, Auburn again had a great drive, but it stalls out here close to the red zone. As Cascade Valley is going to get a sack that forces them to kick their second field goal of the game. This one is up. This one is drilled right down the middle. Put that man in the NFL because he is absolutely killing the game at this point. And speaking of killing the game, Kentucky, who we just beat last week, losing to South Carolina. Maybe he was a couple weeks ago. I forgot. Both those teams we've beaten, however. Uh, pretty much Sage. Yeah, it wasn't really doing anything for me. Cascade Valley back out here with the ball. They're going to hand this ball off to Tyro Brown and the Wildcat, and I think the offensive line forgot to block. I think the Wildcat does not work. <laughs> it used to be pretty good. I got to gotta push my seat back. I'm sitting in a way that my leg is hurting. There we go. This is more comfortable. First quarter is kind of winding down here. Taylor Reed feels some pressure. He's going to move around a little bit. Got a guy coming back to the ball. It's Carnell Killens. And look, we'll take a little bit of a gain here to make it third and short. Two interceptions in the first quarter is not exactly ideal, and it's something that's hurting this team this exact moment. Reed makes a quick adjustment. He sees the blitz. He's got some room. Taylor Reed not exactly known for the speed, but he will use it when he has to. Yo, real deal. Welcome back with the tier 123 months. Let's go. Sorry I missed them. Appreciate you, bro. Last play of the first quarter, more than likely here. 
A dot across the middle to Cardinal Killens, who's having one heck of a first quarter. Browns had a pretty successful run game outside of that one Wildcat play. And he's looking to get some more yards here as he pounds the rock for eight. Jared said, LA done. Exactly. Second is short here. Nice little out route. Beautiful route by Michael Isaacs. in the backfield here with Reed. He's going to look for something, sees a guy, that's going to be Carno Killers who's going to get in the end zone completely untouched. What a route and throw. Such a dirty route. Oh my god. Huge play. Huge play. Auburn knows they got a whole lot of pressure on their shoulders right now. And if our defense could tackle, it'd be a whole lot more difficult. <laughs> hey, let's go, okay? I, look, I'm here for you. If it's gonna put people if it's gonna put me back in the recommended on YouTube, maybe that'll help the channel because I'd love to see the views climb back. Appreciate you coming in, Kay. Second is short. They go with a run here. Dino Gamble and company are in the backfield to stop Hurd for a loss of two. Big opportunity here. Can the squad get the stop they need? They go for a run, and Heinrich, who has been all over today, gets another tackle for a loss. The first punt coming up for Auburn all game. Defense decided they did a really good job here. It's taking them a little bit to kind of warm up and do what they need to, but this is what you need to see. Forcing stops against Auburn. Making them punt the football to the most dangerous man in college football, Jay Boehm. Jay Boehm looking for something. Got some room here. Jay Boehm trying to turn it up. Jay Boehm, for the first time in his career, is trying to do something he hasn't done before. Jay Boehm is going to take it to the house. Are you kidding me? Nah, buddy, we got to see the replay on that one. That one was crazy. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I can't believe you returned that. Genuinely hype on that. Nah, buddy, you better give me the whole replay. All right, the play was too crazy to get the whole replay, but. Oh, that was so sick. Oh, man. Future GGBFL, Cascade Valley. Uh, form, or Cascade Valley alum, J Bone. J Bone. Cascade Valley is feeling it right now. The punt return touchdown by J Bone just took the weight of the world. Off his offensive shoulders, and now the defense knows they can get something done here. Our biggest rival in the SEC. This is our first season in the SEC, so we don't know. We do not know. Rendazzo and shotgun here. We send the blitz, and everybody gets some Travion Wilson bringing him down this time. He said they call me Moss. <laughs> oh, God. 
second and a whole lot of yards right now for Auburn. They go with a quick dump off. Raudano Gambling gets thrown around, but Desmond Simmons gets the tackle. Auburn's a new rival because they're so tied lucky. You might honestly be right. Big play here. Third down and nine. Can we get a stop against Auburn? Randazzo looking like he's lost a little bit. Has no one open and gets sacked again. This man is literally his mother's favorite play. Crazy. Jay Bowe might get a little punt returner of the year, a little returner of the year consideration now. This game has really turned around for Cascade Valley. Struggle to start, and it has been so much better since. But you got to also think Tyro Brown might be dead? Question mark? What I was trying to get to is that you might have to consider that Jay Bohm could be up for returner of the year if he continues making plays like he's making right now. Cardinal Kinlan's oh tough play. Probably better we drop that one, though. What's up, Mike? Third down, nine yards to go. Taylor Reed's going to look for who else but Cardinal Killens. Cardinal Killens is having the game of his life right now. Young fella, get you some. I thought it was going to be Jay Bohm's year, but Carnell Killens has just been so good. Him and Jay Bohm together have just been elite. You'd love to see it. Cascade Valley's defense trying to do what they've been doing is just shutting down Auburn's attack. And again, you're seeing it there. Hurd goes nowhere in that play. So much trash talk before the game. A lot of people saying this could be Cascade Valley's rival in the SEC. And honestly, after they stole Ty, the running back prospect we wanted, and see how this game is kind of win, this could be our SEC rival. Our guys are preparing to send the house here. It doesn't matter, though. Great blocking, and Auburn gets enough for the first down. Dazzle moves under center here with two minutes and change left. He's going to go to another run here, and they're going with the run slowly but surely because I don't think they trust their passing game. Coach Merv McMurvin loves sending the blitz, and he's sending it here yet again. They go with an outside run here, and Dixon again stopped at the line of scrimmage. Dazzle makes a quick little check at the line. He's got multiple receivers out here, at least a four wide receiver set. Our guys are sending some blitzes here, and Darian Bowen company going to bring him down, and it's Odiori finally getting the sack. Pause if needed, and Randazzo is having a tough day at the ballpark today.
A minute and eight seconds left here in the first. The squad is just trying to get some points back on the board to extend this lead going into the second half. We have done an incredible job today. We're trying to keep that going, and Reed just has to get rid of it there at the last moment. Also, major credit to Taylor Reed because this dude has found a way to turn things around when he started so strong, I mean, so poorly, and he has an opportunity for a big pass, two different areas, but he can't get rid of it. Things a little bit tough here. Auburn is really stepping their game up. They use their first timeout. Reed throws one, and it's to Lombardi. His third interception of the first half, and Auburn all of a sudden, they can score yet again. Should have thrown that. <laughs> okay, don't say anything. I will do that uh, to the loser. 1,000%. I will change their team name to that. 1,000%. So Auburn is here with an opportunity with under a minute left to get some points on the board to cut this lead to single digits. Kind of sending as many as we can. We're trying to get over there, and Lanier and company are going to stop hurt after four yards. Guys, again, trying to get in the backfield. They're trying to run here, which is surprising, and they only have one timeout left. Our guys just focus on containing the quarterback right now. The halfback's not doing anything. Gambling trying to get in there. ODR is going to bring him down with one timeout left. They have fourth down right here. We're going to say call the timeout as well because we want the ball back. So did the interception hurt us? I mean, yes, it definitely did. But instead of giving up seven, the defense, which has been the best in the entire nation, in my opinion, only gives up three, which makes it a 12-point game. And we still have some time to maybe cook something up here. Eighteen seconds in a dream right now for Cascade Valley. Looking for something. Taylor Reed again, moving, gets the first down and gets out of bounds. Reed back here with shotgun again. Throws one, and I would say that's 700 feet too far. Six seconds in a dream, but to see if we got anything down there. And we don't. <gasps> he fumbled. Taylor Reed is having a nightmare first half. Luckily, we still have a 12 point lead, but he almost had his fourth turnover of the first. We cannot have that happen again. Boy, they have me nervous. After Auburn struggled to really do much there uh, to start of the second half, we get the ball right back with an opportunity to right some of the wrongs we've had this game, which there have been plenty of them. And Reed smartly gets rid of that one. Uh, I mean, I don't have any problem with it. The Pro Bowl is just kind of a weird thing anyways with how they vote for it. Second down, 10 yards to go. They are sending the blitzes, and Taylor Reed is fighting for his life. Can this offensive line, which is supposed to be one of the best in the nation, finally block? Squad needs something positive right now. It has been a weird game for us for sure. And across the middle is going to be Michael Isaacs, and Michael Isaacs tripped up 42 yards later. Love you streaming. I've been streaming on Twitch for a long time, uh, but 
I just put some stuff on YouTube now, here and there. But I do more on uh, on Twitch as well. Keeping it moving here, Reed. Surveying the field a little bit. Sees a guy, gets right here to him, and his Carnell kill is making guys miss as he gets out of bounds. Really hasn't had the opportunity to run the football in a while. Gets only one yard there, but it's good to just see him touching the ball again. That brings up second and nine. Man left, man left. Oh man, my hip. Cousins at ATL. I would be surprised if he left, honestly. Second and short, going right back to the run here. Brown trying to bounce one to the outside, and he nearly gets the first down. By the way, Chad, if you're on Twitch, uh, you love talking about sports in general, whether it's football, basketball, whatever. Uh, feel free to type exclamation MNY. I'm launching a new sports community called Maybe Next Year. And uh, would love to have you guys join the early access we're doing right now. Completely free, just in Discord, but would love to have you guys join. Third down and one. Brown tries to get to the edge to stretch that one, is unable to do so. Now we got a tough decision. opportunity here fourth down and six coach McMurvin wanted to go for it throws one there's pass interference they don't call it we're supposed to be the home team golly we had that yeah Chad if you guys join that community let me know I'm in there talking sports all the time first down again Keisha Anderson in the backfield he is killing this game Oh, for those of you over in, uh, I don't know, some of you are on uh, YouTube. I'll drop it in there for you guys, too. Second and 11 here. Randazzo's had a tough afternoon. It's going to be even more tough here. Oh, and excuse me. He's out here. Rendazzo, we spoke too soon, and he even breaks the tackle from Mikel Lanier. Uh, okay, if you are in any part of the Discord and you type slash suggest, you can write something that's like, uh, we'd love to see an MMA section for like XYZ reason, and then it'll put it up and people can vote for it, um, which is really cool, I think. Auburn again looking for something to go with a delayed little counter run here. And what a hit by Lanier. What's up, little Pop-Tart? They never throw PI flags this game? Yeah. Not really. Not really. Rendazzo understanding the little wide receiver reverse here. Our guys are looking confused as ever. They don't really see too many of those each season. Yo, real pyro, thanks for the follow. Second and short, another run here. They are sticking to the run, but our defense is ready for it. All that one bit. Trying to get some pressure on that quarterback all day to throw in Lanier against the pass breakup. What a play by Lanier to step up big on that play. What's this on, rookie? Okay, buddy. We're going to change the lighting in here. One sec, chat.
cosmic doxed himself. <laughs> it's too funny. Skasky Valley team, especially playing at home, this has been the most sloppy they've played in a long time, but it's just been a weird game. They haven't really gotten the ball to the guys they usually get the ball to. Jay Bohm stopped running the direction he was supposed to run, and Auburn has the ball on the goal line. What was Jay Bohm doing on that play? The world will never know. Bro, oh, he stopped running. Jesus Christ. What was that? Oh my god. Auburn's got the rock on the goal line. Quarterback's gonna try to flip the play. We're getting instant pressure, but he throws a Darius Beaton, and they are going to be assuming they go for an extra point here. Only down five. I'm throwing this game away, literally. We've gotten a little cutesy with it, and it's definitely hurt us uh, a bit this game. We've got to settle down and play the Cascade Valley football that we know how to play, and it's got to involve this run game. Second is short here again. Offensive line just refusing to block at times. Brother, they are putting all kinds of pressure on us right now. Tyrone Brown has had a solid game in moments, but for the most part, he's been kind of just locked up. Like, under four yards per carry. It's just not what we're used to seeing from him this season. A risky ball, and Jay Boehm getting him involved in this game is going to be an immense importance, of the most immense importance in this second half. Uh, Keith, I would use uh, meta PCs and use code GGB. They'll save you some cash and they can do some really cool stuff. And they're pretty cost effective. So that's what I would do. First and 10. Tyro Brown looking for something, cuts back and gets two yards. Oh, that link didn't work fully. Hold on. There you go. That link should work. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's sick, Nola. Back to back run plays here. Just looking for some blocking. You love to see it. Tyro Brown getting 11 yards. This is what we're expecting to see. Domination on the run game. <laughs> For sure, Nolan. Little play action underneath. Our guy's trying to find something and it's Reed going for a single yard. The plays, I try to usually use the plays they're giving me just to make it like, more challenging, but they're giving me the most dog water plays humanly possible. Second and nine, third quarter again, winding down pretty quickly here. Reed in the face of danger hits Michael Isaacs in the hands, and he just realized they're made of stone. Reed here with shotgun knows he needs something. Goes underneath to Jeremiah Butler, who we haven't hit a ton today, but that's a huge play for us on third down. If you just stop reading Taylor Reese's sideline line after, you know, the touchdowns has been great, but the interceptions, the fumble he had that nearly cost us again, 
This has been unforgivable at this point. Still, Coach McMurray let him know he's on a short leash. He's got to be careful. And if he's not, then he's probably just going to see his backup. Oops. Oh. See what we got, chat. See what we got. The turnovers and issues by Taylor Reed right now have just been unforgivable in a lot of ways. But we know that this is an opportunity still for him to dominate this game, to show that we can win games like this in tough situations like this. And if he can get this team this W, he'll stay in the game. But if he starts slipping again, Coach Burgers pulling him and putting in Mac Thornhill. Uh, Devin, I did, and I don't like it. First and goal again. Cascade Valley, little dump off here to Tyrell Brown. Brown, though, nowhere to go. I mean, that defensive end was right on him the entire time. Second and goal here. Reed feels the pressure. Reed is trying to turn up in a Taylor Reed rushing touchdown. I'm impressed. We'll take it however we get it, champ. Cascade Valley's defense is in the driver's seat with a 12-point lead. They know that it is their time to shine here and get some stops. Hey, YouTube, appreciate all the likes. Make sure you guys hit that like button if you're enjoying the stream over on YouTube. Helps out a ton. Half of you haven't hit it, so if you do, it'll help out a bunch. Second and 13, they go back with another run here, and now they've got plenty of room, but Reggie Kraft was having none of it. Who do you want them to hire? Someone like Kingsbury, who has more of a ability to develop quarterbacks. Third down, three to go. Gambling is going to be there, and I think he almost had him. That was so close to being a stop. Exactly. Hitting the like button heals my Achilles faster. I like that. I like that. I'm definitely biting. I'm definitely biting that. Thank you, Kay. <laughs> Auburn continues to push the run game, which I'm surprised about. And our guys are struggling to bring him down, but they are for the most part controlling it. Second and nine, Donald Gamble and the company. We get there. They're going to throw one to the wide side. Remember, if Simmons gets an interception the rest of his college career here, he is the single record holder for career interceptions. Keep in mind that record would be for just Cascade Valley, but still, it's incredible. Mike Hempel had 19 in his college career, and Simmons is trying to add up to that, but he's not going to do it on this play as Henry Knighton runs out of bounds himself. Man, they're staying alive in this game. Our guy's trying to get a stop again here. The quarterback Rondazzo's going to fumble the football. It's picked up by Smith, however, and I think Auburn might have gained a yard or two. Anthony Odiari has been a grown man. He has seven tackles, four for a loss, three sacks this afternoon. He has been that guy, pal. Auburn back under center here. They'll move their guy over, beaten in motion. He's been electric today, killing us for yard after yard. Lanier watching the middle. They're going for something. They go to that guy across the middle. It's going to be Angle bringing in a huge catch. And he's down at the goal line. 
He goes for a quarterback's roll. We weren't expecting it. And Odiari maybe tore that man's ACL, but he is still in the end zone. We have a single digit game yet again. God, that's a minute, bro. They won't go away. They will not go away. Back on offense here again. We're just trying to have mistake-free football and not turn the rock over. And honestly, running the football is going to help us do that. What's up, Swabby? How you doing? Uh, hopefully not long, Insanity. Second is short. Looking for some run blocking. Not a lot to really be found there. Yo, Andre, thanks a lot for the hundo. Haven't checked in since surgery. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing all right, man. More mental than physical, uh, I'd say at this point, but I'm doing all right. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot for the hundo. Third down, three yards to go. Just looking to get some positive gain. We throw one dumb late there because we thought maybe the guy across the middle will be open, and instead we are punting the football away. Tough times. At some point, this game was laughable where we thought there's no shot we lose. We're walking away with an easy W against a very good ranked opponent. Now we're finding ourselves fighting for our lives with three minutes and 30 seconds left. Five receiver moves over in motion again. Gambling and company have got to make sure they lock up Auburn and don't let them get anything major here. The run game, though, has been so good for them as they get another first down. You got to give credit where credit is due. We have hit Auburn's quarterback a million times today. We have been crushing their running backs with bone crushing hits, and they keep breaking tackles. These dudes are fighting for their lives, and are you kidding me? He is running for the longest run of his day. Emmanuel Dixon goes 45 yards in a scoring territory. Brother, they are just pinball bouncing. I'm like blitzing, pinching the line. It don't matter. Oh, we're feeling pretty good right now. Their quarterback has all day throws a dot here. Lanier! Forces the fumble and our guys dive away from it. Are you kidding me? That would have sealed the game. Mikel Lanier doing what he does best, making a play. And then we just saw someone sell so hard and miss the fumble recovery. I am sick. We don't ever do this in the series, but look at the instant replay. Lanier forces a fumble. Reggie Kraft is better lose his scholarship. I've never seen someone dive worse in my entire life. Look at this ball. We're cutting your scholarship. Oh my god. Bro, I'm so pissed. Our guys have got to do something here. We cannot afford to give up more points, and it's looking like it might just be that as Emmanuel Dixon gets three more yards. Our guys know this is a big opportunity here to get a stop. Lanier and company, Donnell Gambling gets absolutely thrashed. And the good news is we get the ball back with two minutes left. And they're probably going for two here to make it a three-point game. That they are.
Our guys are here just trying to make something happen. The quarterback rolls, and I just watched the guy run away. Uh, what are we doing, Cascade Valley? <sighs> Ran away from his guy. Coach McMurvin is beside himself right now. He is tossing out scholarships left and right. And when I say tossing them out, I mean getting rid of them. These dudes are getting cut from the team immediately. Taylor Reading Company, though, still some of the best in the nation. They can get this job done. And Joe McBride keeping it moving down the field and staying in balance. You'd love to see it. In the situation that we are in now, we do not want to score too quick. A field goal is fine. Going into overtime is okay in college. But we don't want to be in a situation where we score a touchdown and give them a ton of time to go down the field with all the timeouts in the world. over a minute left if we can score with maybe 10 15 seconds left and win this game that way that's gonna be fine by us and Tyrell Brown balling out right now read back in her Sunday or under center, Roderick Johnson gets taken down. Maybe a face mask, if you ask me. Twenty seconds in a dream. Roderick Johnson pushing forward. They're gonna say he's down at the one. Okay. I like our situation now. We can score from here and be fine. There's a play coach Mervin Mervin loves. It is the goal line toss. Teams don't know which way it's going. They try to stop it, but they can only hope to contain it as we're going to get in the end zone with 14 seconds left. We're going to have a lead. It's going to force them to score a touchdown. This is what we needed from Cascade Valley. I'm kicking the field goal too. I'm not having them accidentally miss it. You never end up seeing a kickoff in this series but lord we are having a kickoff right now because i don't want them to have an opportunity to return a kick for a touchdown and then i'm crying in the car they have all their timeouts they're in a good spot they're lining up in a single back formation which feels kind of wild to us and they are running the football i got some questions This kind of feels like a Hail Mary situation right now in 10 seconds. We got to be careful of the intermediate stuff, too. Randazzo fighting for his life. He's going to break the tackle. Anyone stop this man? They used their second to last time out with three seconds left, and they're in Hail Mary territory. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I'm, like, really nervous right now because I've had I've lost games to this before. <laughs> So I'm just sending everybody back. Oh, God, this is way too close. Hold me. We're going to walk out of here with a W. This is a scary home game. Number 14 team nearly gets the W on us. We were fighting for our lives. And then what happened? The Cascade Valley Coyotes are still the number one team in the nation. At least for now. Carnell Killing, six for 174 and two touchdowns. He killed it. And then I felt like he never got the ball again after that six catch, which it is what it is. But still, a W is a W.
Oh my god, that was crazy. <laughs> that game was a uh, doozy. Thank God uh, Jay Bohm returned a punt for a touchdown. All right. Uh, game stats. Let's go. Player stats. Here we go. Taylor Reed definitely had a rocky game. I have to imagine this probably gets him off of the Heisman list, if not this week, then next week. But 354 yards, two touchdowns seems pretty solid, but three interceptions and a fumble is not going to get you very Heisman uh, favored votes. On the ground, Brown, 19 for 79, two touchdowns. He doesn't really have the stats to really showcase how important he was today, but he was a vital part of the team in converting third downs. And then receiving, again, Cardinal Killens was that guy. Six for 174, two tutties. I'm really disappointed we only got the ball to Jay Bohm two times for 37 yards, but they really schemed against him and kept him really away from being open. Defensively, Mikel Lanier, 11 tackles. None were for a loss, but he was saving us from having touchdown scored after touchdown scored. This dude even forced a fumble, and Reggie Kraft sold. Reggie Kraft still, solid game, five tackles, but the junior redshirt has me very highly considering benching him for somebody else. From a sack perspective, big pause if needed, but Odiari had three, Heinrich had two, one for Wilson and for Jesse Rivers, and interceptions, we didn't have a single one. That kind of frustrates me a little bit, but still... We did enough to get the job done. We cannot play like this week after week after week. We have to play a very hungry and angry Georgia team who just got their first loss of the season against Tennessee. Every team that plays us wants to prove a point. And that point is that they're better than us. But ultimately, if we play like we are supposed to, ain't nobody better than them Coyotes. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys on the next one. Golly, brother, that was a game. All right, we're going to do, um, I'm going to try to get the image of Jay Bohm returning the punt and the two guys tripping. Because he broke those two dudes' ankles and they, uh, is that first quarter? Second quarter. I'm pretty sure it was second quarter. Oh, it was this one, right? Oh my God. So it's this guy that's on his hip, dives, and takes out that guy. All right, we got to break the camera. Is it on him? Dude, it's a lock on him. All right. Break the camera. Whoa, I didn't mean to hit the play button. It's always an art to like capture this properly. Make sure this works this week. Bruv, it's not working? Or you were just you were just working. Alright, use the sniffing tool. Use the old-fashioned one. I don't know why it doesn't work sometimes. It like doesn't save it. I don't know why. That is episode 187. Oh my god. We have so many episodes in the series. This is like an anime at this point. The Cascade Valley Coyotes are like an anime. Good stream. Thanks a lot, Coach Doc. Yeah, this is literally like an anime. <laughs> oh, man. What a game. Golly, that was a crazy one. I can't believe how good that game was. I was like, oh, we're going to blow them out. Like when we were up 14, I'm like, oh, it's better be a blowout. It was not. Carnell Killers. Crazy game. I love that I have two very good receivers now. One Piece got nothing on Cascade Valley. Tell him, Slim. Tell him. <laughs> oh, man. Ooh. You got to pour water in here, Chad. If you hear me pouring water, I apologize. Yeah, you can definitely hear that. It's an ASMR stream now. Whoa, we got Miles Jack or Dyla. Let's go.
All right, we got locked out by one guy, so we can break that lock now. KJ visited our school. Nice, nice. Still number one ranked team. W. Georgia. Wow, Georgia has fallen off. This should be a beat down. This is a this is a tune-up game. We need this. After last week. After last week. One piece is go to. I got to get at least 500 to get that. That's crazy. That's so many episodes. Woo. What's up, Zach? All right. So now that we've got that went out of the way, Jameer. Yeah, we're in the driver's seat for him. MJ in the driver's seat. Schweiderman. Uh, we'll probably get there. Scaife. We're fine. Hoke. Nice. Wow. We got 2,100 points that week for him. Um, so we are in second place for him. Henry, even with 700 points, we lost 320. How does that make sense? We put 700 in. We have a 400 bonus, which gives us 1,100. The most that Florida State could do is 700 plus 245, which is 945. We should be gaining week over week on him. I'm still going to keep him there because I think when he locks us, we can break out of that and be fine. I don't understand how we... Maybe somebody bought in from the projected lock cutoff and that's why it put us down 320 that shouldn't that shouldn't happen there's no way the math ain't mathing all right this guy we should be good we're gonna put him at wide receiver i'm pretty sure all right this is what i wanted chat so this guy charles brown uh 92 speed 89 excel 82 man 88 zone 82 press 72 catching is amazing uh but he's gonna be a corner for sure this guy has us locked out but I should be able to break that. Why can I not break that? Explain. Is it not on that screen? Did I not offer him a scholarship? I did offer him a scholarship. Why can I not break that? Am I the wrong player? I am. There's supposed to be a break that lock button. Oh, you got to be within like 2000 points or something, right? it might be that let me check it in the um coaches thing that might be why i can't break that lock chat you need to be within 2000 points of the, la of the last place team i'm not even within 2000 points god we could have i waited too long to Go after that recruit. Am I playing on PC? Yeah. Lit content. Appreciate it, coach. Appreciate it. Well, okay. That plan didn't work then. I was trying to like jump in last minute on, on that, but that explains why I can't lock it or it can't break that lock. So all these guys were good. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens with Janari and Henry. That means I have more points to mess with really quick. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do the same thing. I'm going to look at the top recruit and see if we can offer him something. This guy was, wasn't his speed dumb? 79 acceleration. Yeah, good luck with that one. Mm. Look at interest real quick. Wait, there's a middle linebacker. <sighs> He's a bust. I was like, wait, is I missed out on a middle linebacker? I could use one. Mm -hmm. Look at the tight end. I'll look at the DE. At this point, I might as well take a shot at some of these guys. You might get a gem and then be okay. Some of these guys don't have a bit. Oh, he's got Michigan after him, so it might be okay. If a big school looks at him, he might be. Might be a stud. Mikel Davis, Florida State's after him. Let's take a look.
four four forty yard dash. I'm looking for like a tall corner. He's kind of what I want. Rodriguez Gibson scored us at six foot four. I kind of want another one. That's like real tall. By ten. I need somebody like a little bit further down. It's like I'm looking for like a four star. Ooh, a five star? Oh, that was the running back, okay. Four star. Four star. A lot of defensive ends. Yeah, looking for like a high end prospect. Armani Story. How far back are we in this game? We're 5,100 back. We're never going to catch up. This guy's 60% of the way, but he's trash. Bust. A lot of busts out there, man. Georgia, OU, and Notre Dame after him. Yeah, we're just looking at like the garbage that's like left around Chad and hoping one of these guys are good. How far back are we? 5,000. Oh my God. What's up, Ben? Yeah, this football live stream a thumbs up. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Actually, I think we're all pretty hyped for uh <laughs> for this offseason or this summer when we get this game back. She Crowley. It's all the way. Okay, I'm gonna look at like one, one or two more, and then we'll call it. Yeah, I feel like most of these guys are gonna actually. We're just gonna we're gonna cap it there and check these guys, see if they're any good. What's up, Ellie? We are wombat. We are. All right. Uh, not scouted. Let's see, what we got trash. Super trash. Didn't get any better. No, thank you. Whoop. See, we found somebody. 90 speed, 99 XL. Isn't he tall? 6'3", 178. Got to put on some weight. 85 hit power. This could be... This guy's a project. So we'll keep him. This guy's doo-doo. Super garbage. Is he tall? Six foot. No, he's not going to make the cut. Cologne. Uh, I'll pass on him. Finally caught alive. What's up, Isaiah? Minus eight. No, thank you. Duarte. Whenever I see the last name Duarte, it makes me think of when Kay had that uh, dude. Is it Chris Duarte? That used to put on, like, every team. It's to crack me up. Uh... This guy's okay. 82 block shedding's nice. No, I'm gonna drop this guy. Drop that guy. It's quarterback. 85 throw. It's not gonna be enough anymore. And then bumps. Okay, so we got two guys out of that. Um, that's not bad. We got three guys out of that. Oh no, this guy. I didn't remove. Yeah, he's be removed. He's got a really high carry for a uh, wide receiver, though. Um, Adams is the guy I'm going to give 700 to, and this guy gets the remainder, which is 650. Adams could be fun. 90 speed, 99 excel. We're in first place. Hold on, let me just offer you a scholarship from the get-go. I don't need to offer you all those points. I can give you a scholarship. You might sign. You might literally sign. And you did. Big brain chat. Now we can give Duarte the 700. How far back are we in Duarte? 1400. Oh, yeah, we'll be Gucci. So, I mean, just like that, chat, you know, we got our show, show recruit. Yo, Craigie 88 thanks for the Twitch Prime. Welcome back with the seven months. Chat, show some love in here. Uh, Digital Giraffe, Red Ogre, Danzo What? Thanks a lot for the follows, guys. All right, I feel good about that. So, we added a free safety. I know we're kind of like log jam there, but I'm always down for more free safeties. Yeah, we have a senior. We signed two, so we're going to have... Both those guys probably redshirted. So we have a junior and then a freshman. Freshman's probably starting. Wait, did I, is there anything else that I desperately need that I haven't gotten? A quarterback. I do need a quarterback. Um, I have no other need other than quarterbacks. So I need to go ahead and get a quarterback real quick. It's 
up, jo what's up, bro? Enjoying the series? Thanks a lot, man. Glad you guys are enjoying it. I know a lot of you guys love the Cascade Valley series. I tell you guys, check the other stuff on the YouTube channel too. There's so many good things. The GGBFL series is great if you like that. If you like Cascade Valley, I feel like you'd like that too. Fullwood forever? Hey, yo. Could have been a t shirt. Could have been a t shirt. All right, let's look at QB real quick. So, interest level. Not a lot of people want it. I mean, Taylor Reed could. Is he a junior? I don't know if he's a junior or sophomore. I can't remember. I think he's a sophomore. Maybe we do keep Dunstan. 2,500 behind. Oh, his speed. Slower than him. 85 throw power, 80 accuracy. I need somebody higher. This guy was a bust. It might have to be Dunstan. He doesn't have to be like our forever guy. Look at a couple of people real quick. Most of the quarterbacks this late are terrible. Like almost all of them. I might have to actually put Demetrius Dunstan on there. I mean, he is a gem, but. Mm. Mm. Give KJ the rest. There's no re need to give him the rest. We are up 1600 points and he's 99% locked for the only team in there. There's no need to give him more than what we have. I could give him zero points right now and be fine. All right, let's scout this guy. Oof, terrible. Scout this guy. Not great, honestly. Scout this guy. <laughs> you ain't playing here, buddy. Dunstan, we already scouted. He's okay. All right, he's, he just gets the 400 at this point. I'm actually going to take the 200 from KJ because we don't need that. And then Duarte, I think we can take 100 away from. Because the quarterback is going to be a position of need. And then we'll see how we progress on that. All right. Yeah, Wombat, it's tough. I did one for um, Marvin Mims, and then I'm like, man, I probably should have done it for Lamar. But it's tough. Easy stuff. Thomas Duarte, that's what it was. Thomas Duarte. Thomas Duarte. That's what it was. Auburn falls to number 20. All right, Chad, you guys ready for another one? Let's get another one. All right. Uh, open that. Welcome back to week number seven, year number 13 for them Cascade Valley Coyotes. Now, this week we face Georgia, which is typically very scary, but they've kind of fallen off a little bit. I don't know if it's Kirby Smart's fault or somebody else's fault, but. They're a B overall, B offense, B plus defense, but we've seen our team not play up to the standards they should have last week. So this is a much needed game, in my opinion. Uh, let's look at the roster real quick. Now, taking a look at the roster, they have a really good defensive tackle, really good offensive lineman at the left tackle spot. Their halfback is really good. He's actually been in the Heisman vote a bunch this season. They have a really good middle linebacker. Their defense and offensive line are kind of their biggest spots. Quarterback, though, is where they're really on their downfall. Oh, my God. Their starting quarterback was a freshman, 70 overall. He got hurt. Now they're starting another freshman, Preston Wilson. Two first names. Not fast. Not really apparently having a great arm. They're kind of down bad at quarterback. This is kind of wild to see for Georgia. At wide receiver, they've got Aaron Thompson. I mean, they've got some pretty good overall guys. Uh, their captain is going to be a senior 85 overall. But again, not a lot of speed at wide receiver for most of their guys. A couple guys that are burners, but most of them not so much. We have struggled against way less receiving cords, so we'll see what ends up happening today. 
any athletes able to be QB sometimes, Trey, but I've kind of looked at that a ton. I think we have one or two guys that can actually play quarterback from our athlete spot. So I'm just looking at, I'm getting like an extra one basically um, right now. And we talked about Abrams drain. And again, he's number two in the Heisman vote. Tyro Brown, the number one spot. But after the performance that we saw from Mr. Taylor Reed of the three interceptions, the fumble that he almost lost. I'm not surprised he's on the list anymore. Only one quarterback is still here. It's Tanner Hawthorne, and he's kind of fallen off. It's kind of a halfback award at this stage of the year. But Brown, again, is putting up good numbers. He's getting into the end zone, and that's really what they're trying to see. If he continues on this pace that he's on, he could take home his second Heisman of his young career. And from a top 25 standpoint, we won our game, even though it was a close one, but we ended up doing pretty well with that. USC goes from number three to number two. Again, they jump Alabama in this area. Alabama didn't play last week, but we are holding on the number one spot. We have 41 of the possible first place votes. USC is sitting at 20. This is a very tough thing. USC is a rival of ours. We used to face them in the Big Ten. We hate them. We do not want to deal with them at any point, but they are a team that could be a potential national championship matchup if they can take care of business the rest of this year. All right, now who do we get? We got Perdila and then Adams. Okay. Now, from a recruiting standpoint, we ended up bringing two new guys in this week. Devin Adams is a free safety. We ended up finding that honestly feels like he'll be a good fit for our team. Not a year one starter, but a guy that can definitely do some things. 90 speed, 99 excel, 85 tackle, 85 hit power. These are stats I'd love to see. His coverage, not so much, but he's a guy that again, could be a good free safety force later down the line. We have a lot of guys at safety on both sides. It'll be okay. Then we also got Miles Jack Cardila, 96 speed, 86 excel, uh, 90 jump, 92 man coverage, 88 zone coverage, 90 play rec, 89 press. This is a guy who is starting day one. Whew. Looking at the rest of our guys, I feel pretty good about where we are. Knaves should be signing pretty shortly at this point. MJ Williams, the number one spot. Schweiderman is the number two, but he's creeping up to the top spot. We're doing well for Scaife. For Poke, we're right there as well. Uh, we went up 2,100 points with our week visit for him, so I feel very strongly about how good that's going to be. Henry's a guy that we're trying to maybe find a way in on. I don't really know if we're going to be able to. He's at 77% locked. We have 700 points and a 400-point bonus. It said we lost 320 this week, but Florida State has 700 plus 245, which is less than what we would have. So I don't understand the math ain't mathing, but we'll just kind of give him one more week and see how that goes. KJ Camper Real, who's a halfback slash wide receiver, should be ended up signing. Demetrius Dunst is a quarterback we're trying to look at in case we don't have one of these athletes to swap over there as well. And then Everett Duarte. We feel really good and really strong about how our class is, but let's just see how we kind of rank up against the rest of the nation. And if you're wondering how we rank up, baby, we're number one. One five star, 10 four stars, a three star, a two star, 13 total prospects signed at this point. We're ahead of pretty much everybody. Navy is killing it somehow, number two team in the nation. But I feel very good about where we are. We get another five star, maybe, probably not, but as many four stars as we have still left on our board, we could definitely secure the number one spot for, I believe, the second time in Cascade Valley history. Uh, oh my God, Taylor Reed dominating. Cool. All right, so we are going to jump into this game chat. Hopefully, we can beat Georgia. It was a home game for them, too. That's going to make it tough. I think we wear the the ghost uniforms. Yeah, I think we ghosted out. Let's get a chat.
all right boy a road game in georgia is not gonna be easy ghost races look like uh tennessee i can kind of see that Taylor Reed with a heavy away game after struggling last week. I'm anxious to kind of see how he does this week overall, but Jeremiah Butler getting a reception to start is great news for us. The quicker we can go down the field and quiet this Georgia crowd, the better, because this is not a team you want to be playing in an away game at because they are hostile. But the good news is, despite Taylor Reed having a struggling performance last week, Coach McMurvin still believes in him. He's the number one passing leader right now in the entire NCAA. So you got to love what you're seeing from him. It's just some mistakes are killing us. Under center here, a second and 10. Butler getting involved again. Another big grab for him. Back here to the run game. Reed needs to get to the edge a little bit quicker, and if he does, he could have been gone. Do you create players in this to use in your GGBFL league? No, I don't create any of these players. These are all like auto generated. Um, and then I take players from this and put them in the GGBFL. Other slides over in the backfield with Derek Johnson and Taylor Reed. Reed quickly gets rid of it. Butler again is going to try to push in the field. 84 speed definitely showing there, but nine yards is going to be a first down. Reed makes a quick adjustment here. A little play action fake. Not really loving what he's seeing here. Reed's going to get rid of it smartly. And like last week, we held on to it way too long. That's what I mean. You get to create them in Madden. Oh, how you phrase that? You said, do you create players in this to use in your GGBFL league? How you phrase that is not that. But um, yes, I have to create them in Madden. But I make them essentially pretty close to what they were in this. Suck it out again. Reed holds on to that one. I don't know how he still held on to that rock there, but he's got to get rid of that one quicker. What version of revamp do I use? Uh, whatever the most up-to-date version is. They're down 22 yards to go. It's getting a little dicey here. Reed on the run, throws one. He's not a great guy at throwing the run, but that was an absolute dot to Butler. That was huge. Inside the red zone now, you can imagine the runs will definitely be in plenty for this point. See if Georgia can stop him. Brown trying to get to the edge. Brown gets some good run blocking here. Brown cuts up, and they say he's in the end zone. What a run by Brown. Now you're good, uh, Angel. First and 10. Looking for a run here. What a stop by Keyshawn Anderson. I just, I was just like struggling when I was reading it, but I get what you're saying. Bless you. Thank you, Ellie. Second and 11 here again. We're going to put a lot of pressure on this young quarterback because they're going to be relying on their running back a ton because they don't have a great quarterback. A 70 overall freshman, but this running back is different. I see why he's on the Heisman list.
<laughs> hey, no doubt, Dion, no doubt. Look, if they're going to be sticking to a run game, we're going to be loading up the box and making them prove they can do something else besides run the football or just run right through us. A huge play there. Simmons nearly was able to get to that one, but stops him at the line. Yeah, it's pretty rough one, but Anderson bringing the pain. He's going to get a hit on him, but Simmons is the guy that cleans him up after he spins off of Keyshawn Anderson's hit. Wombat, pretty soon I'm going to uh, do a franchise file like I did last year where I load in rookies on uh, different NFL teams and let people in chat play me. So, no, that's coming soon. Ooh, it looks like a halfback screen here. Our guy sold out a little bit, but we got one guy there in Parker Heinrich, and Heinrich is going to stop him for a loss of four. Great effort all around by the defense to make sure that they don't get anything. Our guys out here cruising. Taylor Reed showing the legs. And we'll take the four yards. Three back is shotgun. Little RPO here. Isaac's going to get the first down on that little pass. RPOs in this game are so scary to throw. <laughs> you were so blind. Reed back under center here. Feel some pressure. Throws one. It's a risky one. And for the second week in a row, he throws a first quarter interception. Man, that was tough. Yo, Dill Pickle, thanks for the follow. So just like that, Georgia has the ball and they're in scoring territory. Got to imagine they want to keep the run game going. They go to the pass. Lanier and company bring down at Abrams Dream. Thompson slides over most. They got a loaded backfield right now with a zillion different dudes. But what a stop by Odiari, who had a big week last week. Some people might consider Anthony Odiari the number one defensive end in this upcoming draft. And honestly, I believe it. That dude is an absolute stud who puts pressure on people nonstop. And Reggie Kraft, we wanted to pick, but we will take the deflection there. Fourth and a lot of yards here. George is going to opt to go ahead and kick the football to try to get on the scoreboard for the first time today. This ball is up. This one is down the middle, and that is a grade A kick by the Georgia kicker to cut the lead to four points. As we check in, and Auburn has a close little lead over Tennessee, but it's so early in that game. Ah, uh, because they've been down bad in this series so far. Insanity. Georgia crowd right back into it. They feel really good with what just happened on the drive, but can it be sustained? Reed with a nice pitch out here to Butler. Butler again, not the fastest guy, but we'll take three. Three back in the center. Butler in motion. He's feeling the pressure, but look at Taylor Reed. Take advantage of what the defense gives him, and he gets another first down. Get the ball right back to Tyrell Brown. Brown again running. Tyrell Brown out here sprinting for a 25-yard run. Let's go, let's go. 
Georgia kind of pinches their line here, but we're still going to hand it off to Tyrell Brown. Brown tries to get to the edge, cuts back up the middle a little bit for four. Tyrell Brown comes out for a play, but he almost has as many rushing yards this week as he did all of last week. It's been a great week for him so far as where Derrick Johnson goes for nothing on that reception. Third and seven to go. Little play action fake here. And that ball does this kind of thrown away a little bit, and that is not what you want to see on third down from your QB. Coach McMurvin doing what he does best, though. He's only seen 13 yards total of offense from Georgia. He knows that this team can absolutely shred. So he's going to his quarterback, and he says, throw me a first down, and he does just that to Carnell Killens, the hero from last week. Big play. Yeah, someone else mentioned that, Genie. I still think it looks pretty cool, though. Our guy's out here ready to go. Reed once again feels the pressure and gets rid of it before anything bad happens. Coach Dan Campbell McDermott. I don't ever put McMurvin in that. He's in his own camp. Second down, Brown back in the game. A quick dump off here to Tyrell Brown. Brown looking to get something in here, and Brown is celebrating in the end zone with a 13-yard reception. How do you create your own team in this game? I had a, I paid the guys that modded um college football revamped they were that modded this game to uh make the uh, uh like to make cascade valley for me to make the uniforms for me like i had a guy design a logo like I, it's a lot of work and a lot of money georgia looking to get something here the quarterback this man looks shook even in a home game oh dion i can't wait bro i cannot wait i got high hopes i thought madden 24 was really good and, uh, I mean, they got a good foundation for NCAA. Bringing the pain here. Look at Gambling and company. Simmons in the backfield, and they bring down Townsend on the two-yard loss. Yeah, I feel like Madden 24 was... Uh, people will poo-poo on Madden every year, but, like, objectively, I think Madden 24 was a good Madden. Um, did it have its issues? Sure. Every sports game has its issues, but I, I liked what we had for Madden this year. Bringing the blitz again. Townsend, a wide open dot. Resi Craft gets stiff arm, and Gambler brings down Vassar after 24. Uh, I hope so. If there's not a creative team, I think people will be pretty bummed. This quarterback finding a little bit here. That was a pass across the middle into heavy traffic, and Burks brings it down for Georgia. I think if you can't make a school, I think people will be pretty pissed. It'd be a pretty big letdown. Townsend again, needing something here for his squad. There was a quick little check down Charlie play. Allen gets bowled over and Reggie Craft forces Vasher out of bounds. Yeah, I think online dynasty is pretty much a given. Again, if they don't have that, I think it's a massive failure, but I would expect it to be back in the game. Second and two, George again trying to cut this lead back to single digits here. Move their Heisman uh, finalist running back in here. And Reggie Kraft with a huge hit, but Townsend does get enough yards. Doctor going to have Fraud State University. You already know. You already know. That would be kind of cool to do uh, custom schools for everybody. They go with another run here. Their running back has been killing it this afternoon. Running, receiving, doing it all. And he gets 11 on that game. 
Yeah, custom one-star universities. Is it release date yet? Nah, we don't know. Uh, this summer is the expectation. Probably July. This is the best Jordan's offense has looked all game. And a huge hit by Heinrich on Shaka Bailey. Fashion moves over into the backfield here long. The QB and the running back, and they still go for a loss of one. When is the uh, fraud game? Okay, when do they play? Third down, 13 yards to go. Their QB got to be feeling some type of way. He goes for a check down Charlie play, and that is not going to get it done. I just hope the online dynasty for NCAA has like 32 teams. That would be nice. Fourth down here for Georgia. If they're needing this field goal. Their kicker has been money so far today. He drills yet another one to cut the lead to eight total points. We check in on the Auburn Tennessee game, and Auburn starting to prove they are that guy, pal. The wild thing about Auburn is they're actually the number 22 rank, 20 ranked team in the nation, but they are 0 for 2 in conference play. Tough, but I mean, they're still heavily ranked, so obviously they're getting some respect. Taylor Reed showing the wheels. We're here for it. Got it, Kay. Second and seven to go. Reed with a dot across the middle, and Butler hauls that one in. What a throw with danger in your face. Pause. This week and last week have been really quiet games for Jay Bowen. We expect that to obviously change a little bit, but the punt return has really been the only major highlight he's had. Bohm sliding over a little bit. Finding a crease, and that one is dropped by Sean Barrow, which could have been six had he held on to it. Six hour flight from Safe Ride. Oh my god. That's pretty nuts. Third down, seven yards to go. He's got to step on him. It's going to be close, and Jay Bohm has that one underthrown to him. If it had been thrown a little bit more on spot, that is a touchdown. Deep in their own territory, Coach Mervis says, I don't care. We're going for it. What a man. Reed again. Makes the adjustment here. Sees his guy. Finds his guy, Michael Isaacs, holding on to a ball, which is always 50-50 for him. Lining back up with a heavy wide receiver set here. The tight end completely open. McBride steaming down the field to an 18-yard gain. Three staying back here. He had Jay Bone potentially on a deep route. Didn't quite see it. But he throws a check down route here to the, the fullback, and it goes nowhere. Second out here for Reed and company. Little pass here to Brown. Brown making guys miss, and he does fight his way for a first down. Right back here to the run game where Derek Johnson trying to be up the middle for six yards, and it's going to be good.
A couple of backup players come in. Some of our guys are pretty gassed at the moment. Reed scrambling. Reed cutting up. And Taylor Reed, are you kidding me? Showing the legs? Who needs a scrambling quarterback when you got a pocket quarterback that can run like that? pretty wild love the series thanks a lot carl you watch the ggbfl too or no so with two minutes left here in the first half it's not looking good for georgia they're down 15 points they need something positive right here townsend has a lot of time back there in the pocket and we're doing a terrible job of really getting any pressure on him No joke, insanity. A lot of wide receivers to the right hand side here. Trying to mix our coverage up. They go with the run, and Anderson is in the backfield pretty quickly. Chat again. A reminder if you're on Twitch, exclamation MNY. Check out my new sports community maybe next year. Uh, we've been soft launching it. Almost up to 100 people have joined on that. So appreciate you guys rolling in. If anybody on YouTube wants a link to it, I will drop it in chat for you. Georgia uses their first time out again. Townsend making a little adjustment here. Slides Bayless over to the right-hand side just to be a blocker. Gambling hits the quarterback, and Lanier kills Purdue. Our guys are looking to get that pressure again on Townsend, but he is making great throws for 70 overall freshman. I think they see the vision in him because we now get it. Drop the link, I got you. George continues having a good stretch of offense down the field. A great cutback there, and they are getting more and more first downs. Now we're getting a little bit nervous. has just been way too comfortable in that pocket. He's throwing an absolute dot over here to Vasher for 21 yards. The one gripe people do have about Mikel Lanier is that his coverage isn't exactly the strong suit. Whatever team gets him in the NFL, especially the GGBFL, is going to have to work on that. Looks like they're going for a run. They're trying to get up the middle, and that's a huge touchdown for them to cut the lead back to single digits. Georgia's still in this game. With that touchdown by Georgia, Cascade Valley still plenty of time in this game to put up some points. They're going to be all right. Taylor Reed back here in shoddy. No underneath play. Butler, solid game. We're using our first time out with 46 seconds left. Here in second is short. Sees a guy deep over the middle is Carno Killens, who may have been killed on that play. Yeah, 
clocking to use the kick here or tick here. An inside pass is broken up by Alex Gaynor Jr. His second deflection of the game. Killers moves back into the backfield here. Reed, a lot of time, has some pressure in his face. McBride is going to catch that one inside the 10 now. Reed and Brown in the backfield. Dump off play here. Brown is going to go pretty much nowhere, losing a yard. We're going to call our second timeout. Hey, let's go, Max. Reed ready to get things going. He's got some time. Sees a guy, throws it in. Killen stops running his route. It would have been a surefire touchdown had he kept going. Tutty. No one wearing eight, they wear it on defense. Mikel Lanier. Third down and goal. Gotta be quick here. A risky ball. We'll kick the field goal here. We wanted a touchdown, but a fourth and goal. We gotta make sure we get the points. So with a win blowing to the right hand side, we're gonna try to nail this kick. Thornhill on the hole. That one is very close to not going in, but it is gonna go in to extend our lead. And Auburn and Tennessee continue kind of an interesting battle, only an 11 point game. So Georgia comes back out here in the second half, down 11 points, just like that Tennessee game that you just saw there. And they know they've got to turn up. And their young quarterback has been playing way better than his overall rating. Bring a guy in motion. Townsend going to keep this one. Townsend throws it around the back. And what a disgusting tackle. Surprising to get penalized for by Reggie Graham. Kraft looked like people in the backyard just playing wrestling as kids. That was a disgusting tackle. I'm surprised to get penalized. And Townsend fumbles on the hit. I think it was Odiari in on that. But Georgia recovers the football. Again, Odiari, this dude has been a monster this year. Going to be the best defensive lineman prospect coming out in the GGBFL next season. He's out here. Bro, he's been insane. The Georgia crowd, a whole lot more quiet than they were before. The little bit of Cascade Valley Orange you see out there, they're pretty hype right now. Now this ball's going out to Jay Bohm, who's been great as a punt returner this year. Can he get some blocks set up? And then happen to get some more yards. Probably not going to be the return we saw the previous week, but still a great return to get the ball 24 yards down the field. Tyra Brown hasn't had a ton of carries today, but we're changing that here. He's going to get some more on this drive. We chat, we're four likes away from 100 over on YouTube, man. Appreciate you guys hitting that like button. It helps a ton. Thank you, guys. Second to shore, McBride moves out in motion. Brown looks to cut back one here. Again, solid gains, back-to-back -back runs by him. Again, quick adjustments at the line. Throws this one to Brown, and Brown has got to hold on to that rock. He turned his head before he had it secured. George is pretty heavy in the box, and we're going to stick to the run game here. Solid game, but it's going to be a good, pretty tough third down here.
one for four in third downs. It's not something that Coach Mervin McMurvin is happy about, especially after how we played last week, but it's the reality of the situation right now. Taylor Reed rumbling around here, trying to find something. Can he get enough for the first down? He does. Are you kidding me? First and goal. Marquette Renee is going to hold on to that one. A Marquette Renee touchdown. That's like seeing a UFO. Big play. Needed that one. Both teams have definitely struggled on third downs today. Georgia is one for five. Cassidy Valley again just got themselves a little conversion there to make themselves, I believe, two for five or two for six on the afternoon. But Georgia knows they need one here. They're going to throw one out to the edge. They say Aaron Thompson does have enough for the first down. And hands this one off. We got guys in the backfield, though, and the running back could have been dropped for loss of three. Still gets four yards with that stiff arm. The Heisman voters are watching this game. They know it's a battle between two of the best running backs in the nation, the number one and number two Heisman guys. And we're trying to prove that we got the better of the two. Ooh, we hit 100 likes on YouTube. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Big third down at five. Towns is going to slide a guy over here. Anderson ready to send the blitz through as soon as he hikes that football. And Towns is taking his time. He knows the blitz is coming. He's trying to make sure his offensive linemen pick it up properly. Look at all the time he has in the pocket. We got a guy there in Simmons, and that's it. He has the record. The 20th interception of his career is going to break the Cascade Valley record. Man, that's so sick. I can't believe he broke that record. To see Desmond Simmons' career, to know that nobody really expected him to be the guy to break that kind of record just shows you the kind of commitment he's had. And speaking of a record, Tyro Brown is about to break a record for longest run there. Nah, no way, Adrian. But 20 interceptions in your little college football career is just remarkable. When that man goes to the GGBFL, he's going to be a highly coveted prospect. But he will always be one of the best players to ever play at Cascade Valley. Rumors had it that Mike Hemphill found himself in the crowd uh, today as well. Because he knew he had a chance to maybe congratulate one of the best players in Cascade Valley history. Third down, four yards to go. Again, we need a successful conversion here. We find Butler, and I think he has enough. They say he did it, but you know Coach McMurf is going for it. I hit A too quick. Oh, God. Man left, man left. Four down, four down. Let's go, let's go. Fourth down conversions have been fantastic for us. We've converted every single time, and this time will be just like the others a great conversion. Uh, he doesn't currently, uh, Apocalypse, because he. His name gets flagged in Madden for being uh, derogatory. Taylor Reed takes his time, throws one. It's Jay Boom. Finally, he gets some separation down the field. Go! 
Same home getting his first reception. This late in the game is just nasty work, if you ask me. But he gets back to back to get a touchdown here. Needed that. Georgia goes three now, pretty much. This ball comes right back to Cascade Valley. Taylor Reed and company are just racking up the yards. As the third quarter kind of winds down here, we're just trying to get our guys as involved as possible. And Jay Bohm has finally seen his name called a bunch, and it is showing. People are starting to wonder, did Jay Bohm do something to get in the doghouse for Coach Mervyn McMurvin? But I think it was just a matter of schemes and teams have been trying to take him out as much as possible. But with the resurgence of Butler and Killens, you have to pay attention to those guys too. It also hasn't helped that we've seen Taylor Reed turn the ball over uncharacteristically more than we've probably ever seen in his young career. Taking some sacks out there as well, but still, Jay Bohm is a dog. Third down to 14, probably the last play here of the third quarter. A dot to Jay Bohm, and how else would you love to see it end? Oh yeah, Madden Junkie. It's a great one. This is the revamp version, so it's been uh it's been fun to play still. So. I'm we're like 180 plus episodes into it. It's pretty nuts. Start of the fourth quarter, we're just trying to make sure that we run this football, get out of here with a W, and can we see some blocking? Because what was that 70? Can you play against Oklahoma? I don't know if they're on my schedule this year. I can't remember. For anybody that was considering voting for the Georgia running back for Heisman, I think they've pretty much seen that he's not that guy. It is one guy and one guy only, and it's our running back. What a dot here by Reed. Are you kidding me? On the run? <laughs> You're so used to rooting for Georgia. <sighs> not today. First and goal, Hicks moving over. A nice little dump off pass to him goes nowhere. What team am I? Uh, I think you can tell. Round in the backfield awaiting his carry. An opportunity to run, but just the lanes are clogging up. Georgia knows that you're trying to run the football to get about of you. Yo, carry 777. Thanks for the follow. I am Zachary. Third down and goal here. Tyrell Brown looking for some blocks. Doesn't really get too much here. And this man is thrown to the ground after a one yard reception. So our kicker, Evan Shepard, who's also our punter, will get a little bit of work here. You already know this man is pretty much automatic. The lead increases 41 to 13. Georgia, where are you at? All of a sudden, now we're seeing Georgia starting to do a little bit of something here. They're moving down the field, trying to get something. Townsend absolutely throwing dots, and he's picking on Lanier in coverage, and it's showing. Uh, it, it's in the title, Zachary. Let's go! 
keep some of our guys a little bit out of coverage. Evan Lanier in coverage isn't really fair to him. He's incredible in it, but look at Aaron Poe bring down Townsend again. <laughs> you already know, Adrian. You already know. Second and 18 to go. Not a lot of guys open right now. If you're Georgia, Townsend has all the time in the world. He's right in the middle of the field. We got guys. I mean, I've never seen someone have this much time to throw the ball. He just doesn't know what he's doing. And that shows you the 70 overall there. Jesse Rivers brings him down. <laughs> Bro, he had nobody open. Sam D's nuts is going to come into the game right now. Third and 25. Georgia just hoping for something positive. They get a nice pass here, but they're still a fourth and 10. Uh, no idea, Zachary. I don't think so. Maybe. I'm not sure. So on a fourth down, it's pretty much make it or break it. They go with a halfback draw, which I would assume is not a good choice. And just like milk not being a good choice, that is not going to be a good choice for Georgia. A lot of these teams from the SEC are really familiar with our play style. We are out here trying to put up numbers. We ain't out here trying to make friends. We are trying to make enemies and put up numbers on these teams and show them that we are the team that they should be fearing, despite throwing for a loss of four yards in that play. I will say it has been really nice to see Reed have a much better game. He's thrown for three touchdowns. He's only turned it over one time, but still, considering all the turnovers he's had before that, it's just nice to see him have a good game. It's also great for Tyrell Brown to be out here balling like he is. He's 100 and maybe 50 plus rushing yards today against a Georgia SEC run defense. We'll take that every single time. Second down, eight yards to go. Jay Bohm finding himself open. Jay Bohm out here skating on him. Jay Bohm out here skating on him. Can he get to the end zone? He cannot, but what a catch. I mean, Randall was because of the lawsuit. That's why it took so long. Back out here to the run game. Tyro Brown goes for a little bit of something, but not really much to be happy about. He really want back? What do you do? Back in the center here for Reed. Decides to throw one here to the backup. Running back and Demetrius Thompson nearly escapes that one for a touchdown. First and goal, getting these guys lined up. Brown nearly gets in the end zone again. Coach McMurray has the guys hurry back up here. He's trying to get Brown back in the end zone, but it's not going to work on that play. I don't want Johnson in the game. There we go. So in third and goal, probably Brown's last time to get into the end zone here to prove that he is the best running back in the nation. He does just that with a four yard touchdown run in Georgia. We'll be seeing him. Love to see it, chap. Love to see it. And just like that, Cascade Valley goes into Georgia. 
a hostile SEC territory and gets a W. Taylor Reed might have got the player of the game, 373, 22 yards on the ground, four total touchdowns. But to me, Tyrell Brown is the guy that helped us lock up this W and do it pretty quickly. It's a big game. Yeah, Brown was a stud this game. Not enough credit to Brown. He was great. Jay Bohm had some major moments too, though. Recapping the stats again, you saw what Reed had, 29-42, 373, three tutties, an interception, got sacked twice today, but overall, he was much better than what he's been in previous weeks. On the rushing, again, 19 for 152, two touchdowns, three runs over 20-plus yards today. That's my Heisman winner running back right there. And then in the receiving game, Jeremiah Butler got started early, 7 for 100. Tyrell Brown at 5 for 27 in a touchdown. Boehm didn't really catch a ball until I believe the end of the third quarter or fourth quarter, but went 5 for 109 in a touchdown. That's what a, a dynamic player does when you get the ball in their hands, let them go out there and make some plays. McBride and the rest of these guys did well. Marquette Renee getting the end zone was a sight for sore eyes. And then defensively, Reggie Kraft, who we've had some issues with, especially in coverage, six tackles for him, one for a loss. We kept him in the starting lineup, and honestly, he did pretty well. Uh, from a sack perspective, we were everywhere. We had one from Odiari, Jesse Rivers, and Jaron Poe. Interceptions, the only one that mattered was the one that happened. Desmond Simmons with his 20th career interception, the most in Cascade Valley history. You love to see it. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys on the next one. All right, that's just the uh the outro we do for the videos and then uh let me what did i what was the play we wanted I'm trying to think of what play would be the best for the thumbnail reed was balling out it's like this is the j bone touchdown this is like back of the end zone that was a dime Maybe J Bohm running wild. Oh, the interception because of the record. You're right. I'm not even thinking. Good call, Trey. Hey, appreciate it, lopsided. What was the interception? Second or third quarter? I don't even remember. Yeah, interception's gotta be it. That was the record. I think third quarter. There it is. Right there. Uh, yo, Koi, thanks for the follow. What, Wombat? That's disgusting. That's nasty work. I had to, like, let the CPU uh, be the one to intercept that. And I had to, like, click on the la or line up. And then I had to, once he, like, stopped moving, then I clicked on. You can see, like, right there where the circle turns green. Right. And once he's lined up, I'm like, all right, now I click on. And then he got it. It's a massive moment in CVU history. So hard to like get this thumbnail the way you want it. like more of the background that's the hard part something about that look kind of stupid it's hard to like not have it be blurry at this distance. My thumbnail guy is going to hate me because it's going to be. It's better be like this. I want the 3D grass though. Oh, that kind of works. And I can put a whole bunch of text to the left. Okay. Why does it not save that thumbnail? It's so annoying. 
All right, there we go. This over here, save. And then 188, I think is the number. Oh, that's so many episodes of one series. Ooh pretty wild, Brad, pretty wild. W. Oh man. Yeah, it's that's a pretty that's like the unfortunate side of Madden. It's definitely the unfortunate side of Madden. Uh let me do a save really quickly for week eight. Okay, CVU year thirteen, week eight. That's like my it's like the frustrating part when you're like having fun with Madden and then somebody just plays that way and you're like how can this be rewarded that's why I'm hoping next year we finally get uh advanced AI to like pay attention to passing games or passing stuff and if people are constantly doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over that the game will be like oh like offensive line if if they're running the same exact blitz pick it up better if they're running the same uh, passing plays and routes nonstop play it better like you know that's what I want to see all right so we got KJ and we got Scaife Scaife is just going to be like a backup guy in case somebody gets hurt uh, which is pretty nice <gasps> which is pretty nice let me give him the rest of those points yeah we're not going to recruit really anybody else we don't really have a ton of scholarships left uh, let's see. So Jameer, like any day now. Oh, UCLA bought back in, and so does Stanford. Okay. Stanford has a visit week 13. They're not going to be able to get back. So we've got him. MJ. Notre Dame's really close now because they bought back in. We get 110 more each week. Uh, they could jump us this upcoming week, actually, for him, which is scary. I don't, I don't think Alabama can. Alabama's going to be out by the time that gets there. Schweiderman. I don't know. This is taking forever. We're probably not going to get him because he's going to... South Carolina will jump us whenever they have their visit. Poke. Uh, we're climbing. We're climbing. But was Oregon State ahead of us? I don't even remember that. Henry, we're losing 55 points a week. The math ain't mathing. But we went from 320 a week to 55 a week. So I'm going to still keep him there. We're going to get locked out, though. Um, yeah, we're going to be we're going to be chalked there. Dunstan, we climbed up a thousand. Duarte, we climbed up 495 and we have a visit. So, yeah, we're good. Do we have anybody that needs a visit? No, we're good. Only guy without a scholarship is Dunstan. So we'll just give him one because we got the points. Not bad. Not the bank. Not the bank. Uh, the running game was, and then they nerfed the running thing. So the, the running game in Madden was had like an AI thing. And then it just like, they kept nerfing it. And they kind of nerfed it into the ground where it doesn't even matter anymore. So that's like nobody talks about the AI thing anymore because it was good at launch. People couldn't run the same glitchy thing over and over and over. People complained and then instead of letting reminding people like you need to open up your playbook they did not care and you could run anything and everything or you could run the same play over and over and you'd have no there's no um deterrent to running the same thing over and over now which is frustrating dang this dude five total touchdowns Woo! we had three touchdowns with 170 ish yards Brown's having a season, though. I mean, 2023 Heisman, 2023 Walter Cam, 2023 Doak Walker. Didn't win a single award in 2024, but he's out. He's going to win something in 2025. Averaging 109 yards per game. That's a career best. 14 touchdowns. He's on pace to at least have his second best rushing season. Okay, 
and then uh re receiving 21 grabs 192 he's on pace to have more receiving touchdowns than he's ever had so he's just good man 96 speed 93 excel 93 agility that are losing this dumb high what team is ranked highest in the rest of the schedule oh we can go look at that really quick yeah simmons got his 20th interception so he uh he broke the record from hemphill <laughs> he's a doubt uh team schedule so we have a national tv game against wisconsin next week it's our only tv game actually we don't have a single opponent this ranked. Tennessee could be ranked. Oh, they lost. Just kidding. Tennessee is down bad. Texas also down bad. I'm like genuinely shocked these teams are down bad. Um, like <laughs> what? Texas lost to Arkansas. Oh, they had a tough schedule. Arkansas, Ole Miss, Auburn. They beat. Lost to Georgia. Dang, they've been down. They might. Mm, I don't think they'll be ranked by then. There's a lot. There's a lot. But it's still, uh, still a tough schedule. But it just isn't as tough as we thought it was going to be um, at the start of the year. And then look at uh, Taylor Reed is leading the passing yards by almost a thousand right now. <laughs> Rushing Brown is top six. Uh, receiving Killens is number three. Tackles, gambling. I mean, we got a whole bunch of dudes there. I think that screen's glitch. ODR is eight sacks. Rivers is seven. Those guys are leading. Simmons is five interceptions in the year. Tied for the lead. 103 for Shepard. We don't really kick like that. Any Anytime it's a long field goal attempt, I'm like, nah, buddy, we're, we're not kicking that. But yeah, Reed is balling out. 24 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Brown killing it. Five and a half yards per carry, 14 rushing touchdowns. Killens 30 for 631. Jay Bohm 29 for 587. Six touchdowns for both those guys. They'll both have double digit touchdowns this year, um, which makes me really happy. Isaac has had some big games too. He is the longest catch or second longest catch of the year. Yeah, we got we got we got some we got some dudes there. A wide receiver. I'm happy with that. All right, though, chat, uh, my daughter just got home for school or from school. So I'm going to go hang out with her for a bit and prop my leg up so I can get some blood flow. But uh, to my legs, this thing is, yeah, late struggling. I appreciate all you guys being here. Uh, YouTube, thank you guys. I'm going to say goodbye to you. And then Twitch, I'll say goodbye to you guys in a second. But I appreciate you guys being here. You know the deal. Be safe. Be smart. Tell somebody love them. Catch you guys in the next one.